In this video, we're going to speed run the basics of data analysis in Python in three minutes. Let's go. Pandas is the most important library you're going to use. To import it, type import pandas as pd. To read an Excel file, use pd.readexcel and pass in the name of the file. To read a CSV file, use pd.readcsv and pass in the name of the file. If you're in Colab, we got to upload these files first and use these lines. Either way, you store the result in a data frame, which is how we access the data set. You name it whatever you want. I'm naming mine df. To look at the first and last five rows, type df. All rows are represented by an index starting at zero, and each column has its own name. To look at just the first five rows, type df.head. To look at just the last five rows, type df.tail. You can put in parentheses however many rows you want to show. For instance, this shows the last eight rows. To get a general description of the data set, type df.describe, which gives you a table of things like mean, min, max for every single column. To select just one column, type df and then square brackets and the name of the column in quotations. This just selects the talent column. To select multiple columns, use double square brackets and separate the name of each column with commas. This just selects the talent and research columns. For more precise selection, we can use lock. To use lock, type df.lock and then square brackets. Lock takes in two arguments. The first one should be the rows you want to select. If we wanted to select all rows from 10 to 20, we can write 10 to 20. The second argument should be the columns you want to select. If we wanted to select all columns from country to research, we could just type country colon research. This table represents our actual selection here. To get the mean of all columns, type df.mean. If you want the mean for a single column, we can just select one column and type .mean. To get the median, type df.median. We can also use this on a single column or multiple columns. To get the standard deviation, type df.std. We can also use this on single columns or multiple columns. To get the variance of all columns, type df.var. To filter certain rows, we can use conditional statements with lock. This particular example shows rows with infrastructure scores over 50. If you want to add multiple filtering conditions, we can use an ampersand symbol here. Now we're showing infrastructure scores over 50 and rows that are in the Asia Pacific region. We can also use the isIn method to check rows with categorical variables. To find all rows from Europe, we could select region.isIn and then plug in Europe. If you want to select multiple options like Europe and Americas, we can do that too by separating them out with commas. If you want to drop rows with NA values in them, you can do df.dropNA and then specify in place equals true. In place equals true specifies you want to actually modify that data set. If you instead want to fill the NA values with something, you can do df.fillNA and then enter whatever you want to fill them with. For example, fillNA0 fills all NA values with 0, and again you want to specify in place equals true. To replace a value at a specific cell, use lock to select the row and column of that cell equals something else. This line chooses row 12, column talent, and replaces it with 25. To rename columns, call df.rename. Inside here, pass in a dictionary that has the old column names as keys and the new column names as values. This renames income group to income. To drop a column, type df.drop. Pass in a columns argument and enter a list of all columns you want to drop. This drops the cluster column. To graph datasets, import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. To make the graphs, type plt and then the name of the graph you want to make. If I want to make a scatter plot between talent and research, I can type plt.scatter and then plug in the column names. We can also add titles and axis labels using title, x label, and y label. Another example, I could do a histogram of total scores by typing plt.his and then passing the total score column. Check out matplotlib for all possible graph types. To make linear regressions from sklearn import model selection and linear model, then import numpy as np. Set our regression variables x and y. For each one, make it a numpy array, select the column you want, and then call reshape negative 1 and 1. To set the training and testing splits, call this line here. Test size of 0.2 means the test set is 20% of the total. To make a regression model, call linear model dot linear regression. To train the model, call dot fit, and then pass in your training set. Now your model is finished. To get the score of your model, call dot score and then pass in the test sets. To get predictions for your model, type dot predict and pass in the x test set. To plot the regression, make a scatter plot using the training sets and a linear plot using x test and predictions. Add some labels and a title and now I've got a nice graph. Congrats, now you know data analysis in Python.